What happens during an irrigation inspection? I'm Donna with Dowco Enterprises, and this is Brent. Hi. We are here doing an irrigation inspection. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the reasons to do an irrigation inspection. Number one is we check the clock times. Things change, the weather changes, and the way that we started the system in the spring definitely is not the same water usage we need in the summer. Number two, plants grow. Things get touched, bent. Uh, we just want to check coverage and make sure that the plants are getting the proper watering before they tell us they need more water or that they're getting too much. And number three is we want to check the system mechanics or the parts and make sure that they are still functional. The first step when we do an irrigation inspection is we come to the controller and we will set it on a test program if possible, which is really easily. We're gonna run it for two to three minutes depending on the size of the system. And we walk through and examine each head individually as we go, uh, making notes the whole time to note of the coverage if there is an issue there, and also the parts in case there's a leakage or a breakage somewhere. And the final thing we'll do after making the notes of whether or not the system is running long enough or too long is come back to the controller and we will set it to the appropriate times and intervals. This year we've been installing some smart controllers. The Beehive controller, which is a smart controller, will also help you reduce your run time, which means you reduce water usage and your dollars expended. Completely controllable through your phone. We're going to turn it on, walk each individual head, Determine the coverage, be sure that everything is set according to the needs. So as we walk, we're gonna check them, be sure they're going, in this case, 180 degrees, and that the spray pattern is set correctly. Whoa! <laughs> so what are you doing? I'm adjusting this one. It's throwing a little bit too far out into the driveway. So just a small adjustment on the top of the head. And now it's not throwing out there, but I'm still able to cover the grass on the side. Okay, great. This head needs replaced with a 12 inch head. And the reason being right now, we're throwing water against this boulder, we're throwing it against the juniper, we're throwing it against the, I think that stage. And it's basically water's running down the edge of the driveway. So a 12 inch, does it mean it extends higher up? Right, it's gonna raise up instead of just four, like that one is, we're gonna be about this high, which means we're gonna be able to cover a lot more of this landscape area. Great, okay, good idea. Now on this particular zone, we've got a curvature of the road, which for, is a little bit of a challenge to get it all watered. So we're either gonna leave things dry, which means you're gonna get a brown crescent next to the road, or we're gonna be watering the pavement a little bit. My choice is to try and straddle it just as much as I can. So we're gonna waste a little water, but we're gonna get that crescent wet at the same time. So in order to get this, we've gotta come over and overspray towards the front of my van. Let me show you again. I see, that makes sense. So we've got the left-hand side taken care of. We're, we've compromised. We're gonna get it all the turf wet, but we're still gonna waste a little bit of water. The idea is to be sure that you've done the best compromise between the two. And once we've adjusted on this side, we've gotta take a look at the flip side. So now we've got a whole other crescent on this side that's gotta be watered, which is once again, just another adjustment that has to be done on the head. See all that water we're throwing over? If we don't 
throw the water over, we're going to have a dry spot here. It's kind of you pay your money and you take your pick. Thanks, Brent. And I've adjusted this head to where it's going to throw over here and cover an area that's not really getting covered. But due to the size of the boxwood, we're not getting coverage from that head. So I need to change the nozzle on this one from a 90 degree to 180, actually about 120 or 190, so that we cover the liriope in this area. Okay, so I'm going to, well, I'm not going to step back because I'll be in the pool. <laughs> but this head is, the boxwoods are behind it. And so we're not getting enough coverage. Right, and, and we that's need what to... you want in your landscape area. You want your stuff to grow, but as it grows, it's going to require different coverage. Okay, super. So I'm going to open this valve box. There's nothing wrong here at this time, but the valve box is where we end up going, not every year on every property, but as systems get older, the valve loses its ability to resist the pressure. So it'll stay on a little bit and sometimes it'll stay on a lot so you'll get a wet area or you'll get a real wet area and the valves are the problem with that okay and this is a valve box and you're going to open it <laughs> <laughs> not right now i'm not there we go okay Brent, do you ever open a valve box and they're full of water oh all the time and sometimes it's a bad sign and sometimes it's just a sign of the placement of the box. So it's not really indicative of a problem or not. So the valves are one thing that don't last forever. Uh, 20 years is pretty much all you're ever gonna get out of a valve. And once the first one starts to go bad, expect more or less a domino effect because every time you repair a failed valve, you've increased the pressure in the system and you've made the next valve more susceptible to failure. So that is why people will sometimes say to me, well, nothing was wrong with my system and suddenly all these heads are breaking or I have all these repairs. And they're a little frustrated and annoyed when this happens. <laughs> I understand their frustration. It's planned obsolescence. Most irrigation stuff is strictly made out of plastic and we've got a limited life. And depending on how much you use your system, and how high your water pressure is because both of those things will have an impact on how long they last. The valves, like I said, once the first one goes, expect more or less of a cascade effect. And the heads slower and to a lesser degree, but yeah, once they start to go, they're all gonna go. Okay, all right, good to know that. We just ran this and I noticed that it's wet right here along the wall. You can see the track made by the lawnmower. And it's wet again over in front of the steps. Now this may be one of two, maybe three different things. Uh, the first thing is maybe it's too much water on the zone we just ran, which is zone eight. Or it may be the water is coming down off the landscape area and cooling here and cooling on the other side of the steps. And it's also possible that we've got a mainline leak. So one of those three things, it needs an investigation to find out why we've got this entirely too wet area and it may just be a function of the timing or it may be an actual fixture issue okay so it's something to dig deeper into correct i think these rotors some of them require adjustment every single year and the internals are plastic gears and they're not really made for durability and precision so in order to keep the coverage correct we need to walk this every single year because this one i just walked up to and it's not quite throwing as far out as it needs to toward the street. And that adjustment may need done every year, it may need done more often. And if it turns into a problem, we'll put a new head in it. So well, this head is a victim. I don't know whether it got run over from traffic on the street or whatever happened to it. It's been run over and damaged from the top and the nozzle's no longer in it. It's now throwing out of the street and it's not throwing water correctly. So it needs to be replaced.
We've looked at all the zones, checked the coverage, checked all the heads, checked the valves. What do we do next? Is this it? Are we wrapping it up? What's next? We got one more step we need to complete. The controllers need taking a look at. As we walk through the system, we've made notes about whether it's too dry or too wet, and we're gonna make those adjustments now at the controller. These particular controllers are beehives, which means they are artificial intelligence compatible. And I'm using one at the shop right now, and I really like it. I mean, there are a few things that you're gonna to wanna to take care of manually, and these allow you to do that, as opposed to a lot of the other smart controllers. These are intuitive and they are still accessible at the controller, which makes things nice. So, and I saw you also can control it from your phone. Oh yeah, so you can control it from your phone right here at the house, walking through the system or from Mallorca, if that's where you want to control it from. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how it's running right now. And there are some parameters within the system you can change and not take it off of the AI. We run one at the shop. So far, I really like how it does, except for some of those conditions where we're trying to keep flats of flowers or shrubs. But what we're gonna do now is go through and adjust according to the run times and the notes that we made. Okay, great. Well, any other notes on uh irrigation inspections. How often do people do these generally? Not often enough, to be <laughs> honest. Because when we start them up in the spring, that's an entirely different weather situation. We're getting rain at least weekly and sometimes every other day or three days in a row. We don't want to overwater at that time. It's not healthy for the grass. The roots don't go deep enough. So that watering is not going to hit it right when we get to be June, July, and August, typically in St. Louis area. We need a lot more water at that time. And then we need to hit it again in the fall because things change one more time. Days are getting shorter. We may or may not get more moisture, but the requirements change. We're dealing with cool season grasses that we're trying to stay green all year long. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Brent. I appreciate you walking through what happens on an irrigation inspection. And if you would like us to perform an irrigation inspection, please just call Dowco. Thanks. Bye-bye.